Hi, I'm here with Dr. James Wexmonski, Associate Professor of Psychiatry at the Florida, uh, Florida International University. Thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. So Dr. Waxmonski will talk to us today about attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and medications. Um, so the first question I have is, uh, when, uh, how does a parent know when it's the right time for their child who's already been diagnosed with ADHD you know, to, right. to perhaps get some medication? You know, I think that's an excellent question. That's certainly something we get asked routinely. You know, and, and first, you know, as you mentioned, you really want to make sure you have established a diagnosis. It's, uh, we don't recommend um, particularly medication treatments just for any child having any behavioral difficulties because the medicines really are most effective and should be reserved for people with a, a formal diagnosis. So whether it's through your pediatrician or another mental health specialist or the school, that's really always the first step. And then uh, typically uh, the next recommended step is to try to engage in some type of behavioral uh, treatment. You know, looking at how you interact with your children at home and how the school is structured uh, and paying attention to the effects of consequences and rewards, which, uh, you know, is always best done with the guidance of a mental health professional. And then particularly, I think everyone will agree, and there'll be very little controversy, if your child is still struggling with difficulties with hyperactivity, uh, controlling their behavior, or paying attention, and all that stuff is going on in the background, then it's extremely reasonable to consider medication on top of that. It's a little bit more debatable uh, when, people, when behavioral services haven't been put in place. And it can be tricky to start those up because of limits with insurance, not knowing where to go to, and simply you have to find the time for you and your child to be there. The medicines are certainly helpful uh, if behavioral treatment hasn't been started, but the long-term studies will suggest you're going to get the most effect if you can combine the two treatments. And also, generally, if you use, uh, make use of behavioral treatments, you don't tend to just have to rely on the pill. So you don't need as much medicine. Needing less medicine almost always makes it easier to tolerate the medicine, especially over time. So where can a parent go to obtain medication for their children? You know, just like with everything with children, you know, the typical starting point is your pediatrician. And ADHD is so common, it's kind of like the ear infections of mental, of, uh, mental health, that anywhere between 5 to 10 to 12 percent of children will carry a diagnosis. So pediatricians are generally very well versed in this. So it's always a good idea to start with your pediatrician. Some will feel extremely comfortable and be, more, and be able and willing to offer medication treatments. Others may recommend that you go to see a specialist, and this can vary from a neurologist uh, to a child psychiatrist, but tip, you'll, you'll need to go to a physician who has some specialization in a mental health or, or brain disorders. And how would a parent know um, what type of ADHD medication is right for their child? You know, our jobs would be so much easier if we could really identify which treatment is going to work well for which child ahead of time. But to a degree, it's kind of like antibiotics. There's dozens of different antibiotics, and there, there's kind of classes. But generally, if you pick one, you, you just need to kind of catch the class that will work. Um, and it's probably this even coarser than antibiotics. And most of the ADHD medicines are relatively similar. We have three main classes. Two types are called stimulants, and one type is called non-stimulant. And typically, they'll work fairly well. Uh, some work a little sooner than others. Some work a little later in the day. But all types of ADHD medicines that have been FDA approved are going to be effective for attention, impulse, hyperactivity. And one may work better than another, it's, um, but it's hard to know ahead of time which one is going to work the best. So there is, unfortunately, no simple blood tests or anything like that that we can do to guide it. So it comes down to being practical. Um, you know, it is important to pay attention to how much things cost, uh, and that's a very relevant deciding factor. And the next most important thing, I think, is if, just to help your, your um, medical provider understand what are the biggest problems and what time of day are they occurring, because certain medicines work best at certain times of day. So if you can provide that information, usually we can identify a medicine that's helpful. But you, know, you don't have to be spot on because the medicines are much more similar than they are different. Hmm. So what kinds of benefits are there to these medications? Well, the, the really nice thing about the medicines is most of them work fairly quickly, particularly what we call stimulant medicines. And, and briefly, I just want to mention that uh, when I say stimulant medicines, really what that refers to is you're stimulating blood flow to the brain. You're basically increasing the uh, efficiency of certain parts of the brain to do their job. So we're not simply talking about giving people caffeine so they can stay up throughout the day. That's very different than what we're talking about with prescribed stimulant medicines for ADHD. Uh, but they're very helpful. Three out of four times children will experience benefits with being able to 
pay attention longer to one thing, ignore other things going on in the background. It, you, they have to sit and try to do it, but if they try to put the effort in, they'll be better at it. And then likewise, I kind of call them brake pads for the brain. They give you a chance to think for a second before you make a choice. So most of the really bad choices kids make is because they're angry and they do the first thing that comes to mind. Hit, scream, steal, cheat, lie, that kind of stuff. If you get them to think it through for a half second, there's a pretty good chance they'll make a better choice. And then certainly with hyperactivity, just if kids need to sit still, it makes it easier to sit still if they choose to. But these aren't sedatives. Our goal is never to tranquilize a child. So on a playground, they can run around and be as loud, as goofy as they want, as, if it's appropriate. But then they'll, it'll be easier for them to make the choice, if they want to, to sit still and listen in a classroom. And how about non-stimulant medications that you mentioned? Do they have the same type of benefits as stimulants? Yeah, generally non-stimulant medications came into existence about 10 years ago, at least in more widespread use, to offer an alternative for the percentage of kids who either didn't respond to stimulants or for the percentage of kids who just couldn't tolerate stimulants. And usually we're dealing with issues there about having problems sleeping or gaining weight. So non-stimulant medicines, the general rule of thumb is they're going to be a little bit easier to tolerate, so you don't have to worry as much about weight or sleep, although many kids eat and sleep fine on stimulants. But you're going to get some trade-off in terms of effectiveness. They're not going to be quite as strong, and, and the biggest difference is they take several weeks to work. So a traditional stimulant medicine like Ritalin or Adderall, it will work pretty much that day. That dose is going to do what it's going to do that day, just like a pain medicine, like an aspirin. Whereas a non-stimulant, think of an antibiotic, it's going to take um, probably closer to a week or two or more to really see what that medicine is going to do. So you're kind of looking at balancing side effects for uh, benefit when you start with the two, when, when you're trying to pick between one or another. Mm -hmm. Um, so you mentioned the benefits of these medications. Are there any risks to stimulants or non-stimulant medications? Every medicine under the sun has side effects, even stuff that we can buy over the counter. So I mean, you could, Tylenol in large doses can be very problematic. Mm -hmm. Typically, again, the nice thing with stimulants is what you see the first day is what you're going to get. So if you're not going to have a side effect on day one, you can be pretty rest assured that in the here and now, it's, your child's going to tolerate it pretty well. Rule of thumb is pay attention to what they eat, particularly in the middle of the day, because most stimulants are, uh, do drop appetite, and that's strongest for lunchtime. Uh, pay attention to how they're falling asleep, because anytime you wake the brain up, it may be a little less likely to want to go to sleep at night. So particularly if you're dosing these medicines later in the day, which we typically recommend morning dosing, you want to pay attention to does your child fall asleep on time. There's always a chance of a headache or a stomachache, uh, especially if kids are not eating well or skipping meals. And then there's simply a chance that the medicine won't work. Um, and most of these are generally correctable and tolerable in a majority of children, although we always recommend uh, doing this with medical monitoring from your doctor, whoever it may be. So speaking of medical monitoring from the doctors, mm -hmm. how often should parents go to see their doctor once their kids are taking these right. medications. You know, it obviously varies and depending on the initial response, the age of the child, if there's any other complications with their health or other emotional issues. But as a rule of thumb, you probably want to have some contact back with a doctor who prescribed it within the first couple of weeks just to see how it's tolerating. Typically, I'll tell parents to contact me within two or three days just so I can hear how it's going because, like I said, the most side effects are going to come out then. And then and usually we'll start off at a small dose because while age and body size are a predictor, you never really know with any individual child. So typically we'll start small and then go up as we need it. So if you don't see people back, kids can linger on ineffective doses for a long time. So some point of contact within the two weeks and then usually a visit to see the child within four weeks. And then any time you're adjusting the dose, it's a good idea to have your child be seen within you know, four, two to four weeks of that dose. After you've found a stable dose, and it's pretty clear that it's working, it's pretty, you know, there's only a need to check in you know, a couple times throughout the school year just to make sure that it's working as well. And if the school demands have changed a lot, you want to make sure that the treatments are keeping up with that. Um, and what happens when the children get older? Do they have to continue on this medication forever? Right. Well, that's unfortunately usually answered by the kids. One of the biggest problems with the medicines, they just don't simply want, they don't want to take them over time. Most 
teenagers in particular are not a big fan of anything that make them different and their adherence to medicines is uh, unfortunately fairly poor whether it's for something that can be fairly life-threatening like diabetes or something that's helpful but not medically necessary like ADHD. But as a general rule of thumb, life is going to get easier. ADHD is not a degenerative disease where it gets worse each time. Uh, a good chunk of kids will still have their symptoms, but as they get older, and especially, especially if they have good awareness and they've had some success, they may be able to manage without medication. So we uh, do encourage as kids approach middle school into high school, uh, you know, at least you know, once a year, trying to see how they do off medicine. And if they can maintain it, then fantastic, you don't need it. If life gets more challenging as they go to college or do something else, you can always restart the medicine. But it's not an automatic assumption that you need the medicine lifelong. I always tell parents to evaluate it a year at a time. If we're going to start this and it's helpful, let's continue it for the school year, and then we can evaluate the need for it each year. Great. Thank you. Is there anything else uh, that you'd want to tell parents about medications for ADHD? You know, I think one of the most important things to remember, there's always some sense of unease when you're giving a child a medicine that affects their brain, you know, more so than their heart or their blood counts and things like that. But in reality, these medicines have been used since the 1930s and in really widespread use for three to four to five decades now. And tens of thousands of children have been on them uh, for extended period of time. So they're really fairly predictable medicines. We know what they do and we know what they don't do. And we tend to know what their side effects are in the here and now and in the long term. And typically, they're quite safe over long term use. It's just a matter of paying attention to make sure your child's gaining weight and growing as they should. So these aren't, um, these aren't new things, uh, and, and they generally are effective. Uh, so there's really, we know as much about them as we know about most medications we would prescribe a child for any disorder. But at the end of the day, you always want to pay attention to providing services to the child uh, and what we can do at home in school. Because we know, again, if we just rely on a pill, we're going to up the dose constantly. And really, we want to be able to provide the, the child with the services that they, they need to succeed long term so they have a good chance of uh, functioning well into adulthood without having to use medicine long term. Thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate it.